Welcome back, folks. We are doing another AI Minds podcast, and this is a podcast where we explore the companies of tomorrow being built AI first. I am your host, Dimitri Os, and this episode is brought to you by DeepGram, the number one speech-to-text and text-to-speech API on the internet today, trusted by the world's top enterprises, conversational AI leaders, and startups, like some of which that you may have heard of Spotify, Twilio, NASA, and even Citibank. In this episode, I have the pleasure of being joined by the founder of Vappy, Jordan. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing good, man. That was a great intro. <laughs> Appreciate that. So I've almost got it memorized by heart. That was great. That was great. Well, yeah, thanks so much uh, for for reaching out and, and having me uh, on, on the podcast. I've been very excited and I've heard a couple episodes, so it's nice to be a part of it. Well, let's start with a bit of your story. I know you are Canadian. I won't hold it against you in the next 20 minute conversation, but you have been transplanted to the US. You started a company in Canada and then went through YC. Can you talk to me about that company that you started? Yeah, uh, it actually started as a like five co-founders or five people working on a school project. We applied to YC. We actually got into YC and they were like, okay, time to like uh, drop out of school and figure out what we're going to do with our lives now. Uh, pivoted maybe 12 times uh, no during way. the YC patch. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, and what that, does that look like? What What did you go in with? And then oh, how did you pivot? We, and how... we, we apply with like a, an investing app idea and then by the time we had the interview it became like a lecture platform for like professors and then like it just like it was like months of that um, <laughs> wow. and then it became a button to join meetings really quickly in your menu bar uh and that actually went pretty viral we got it to like 10k uh weekly actives i still run into people who are like oh you were super powered i miss it i'm like oh yeah sorry for sorry for shutting it down i was just gonna say i want that yeah, no, it's, it, uh, I mean, I wish I, I wish I had it, honestly, Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, those are the good days. And then we, we worked on that maybe for three years when ChatGPT came out, became an AI note taker. Uh, and so we were in like the scribe space for a little while and we used, you know, DeepGram uh, for that at the time. Um, and we, yeah, we grew that's maybe half a million in revenue. And then we just kind of burnt out, honestly, uh, about three, four years of calendar apps and productivity tools and not having a clear user um, and just kind of building for everyone and not a specific person. And so I don't think we ever had any ideas for how to create more value for people than, than we already were. So it kind of flatlined. Um, then we decided, okay, let's just, let's just move to SF. We'll start from scratch. Like we'll throw everything out. Um, the, the team shrunk as well because they, some didn't want to move. And um, me and my co-founder, Nikhil, just went into the, the abyss. And then we're trying to figure out what, we were going to do with our lives uh, moving forward. And Nikhil almost ran off to uh, India to go help kids. And then... Oh, I've done that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, well, I need him for now. Uh, so, Yeah, don't let him talk to me. I'll tell him how magical it was. <laughs> Life changing. <laughs> uh, yeah, he almost ran off to Kenya to do crypto for tribes. Uh, oh, and I haven't then, done that one, though. Yeah, yeah that, that was fun. fun. But it was a little scary, honestly, to have your co-founder yeah. with him. So it was like one foot in, one foot out as you were trying to pivot your way into something that yeah. you felt like had more interest, more traction. And also, man, like I got to commend the effort because what a cutthroat space, like productivity tools. It sucks. It, wow. No taker apps. Wow. Very competitive. Nobody wants to spend more than $10. Mm-hmm. And so you're just you're just fighting for all these people who want to pay yeah. eight eight bucks a month. It's really it's re- it's really tough. Um, there there is, there is a, a move where we could have gone to enterprise and 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 done that in healthcare or something. I think that would have been successful, but I just don't think we cared enough uh, to keep going. So were you just going out and trying to diversify your life experiences and interview people, doing it the YC way, trying to figure out where's the pain? Where's people's pains at? Who's oh, using man, Google like that? Oh, I, I did that the first time around. Um, but this time it was actually like, let's just lock ourselves in an Airbnb and SF uh, for three months and just see what pops out. And and we were just throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall. We were like studying like the Macintosh 1984 videos and stuff. Like how did, what, how did they do it? How did they make something that changed the world? 
I mean, the, probably the most significant thing was I think making a big sacrifice just pushed us to think larger and we didn't want to work on anything sh like small anymore. Um, and so I one day had a very hard day and was like, I need something to talk to. And at the time I didn't have anything to talk to. There wasn't like ChatGPT voice or whatever. Everything was shit. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, what if I just build something? I'll stitch DeepGram and like and like eleven labs and like a whole bunch of stuff together and see if there's um see if it sounds good. And of course it sounded like garbage. Uh, because it's like really slow and like what the models at the time took like six seconds to reply. They weren't built for like real time streaming. Even then, like I think the streaming API was still pretty early. Um and so yeah, so we were we were trying and, and I went on walks for like two hours a day talking to this thing, rest of the day building, talking to two hours building and then um Eventually, it got like kind of okay, and I was like, okay, we're building an AI therapist company, and we're going to go onto school campuses and hand out little business cards with like AI therapist phone numbers, uh, and people are going to call them, and that's our business. Um, that <laughs> that <laughs> scares me just thinking about it because of the. <laughs> it did not scare you at that moment, like people who are trying to. There's there's a spectrum of uh, therapy needs, right? And so if you leave some therapy needs that are pretty severe to an AI that can hallucinate. And as you said, sounds like crap that mm -hmm. maybe you need to be talking to an actual human for that could just get dicey quick. However, um, Uber was dicey, right? True. Like it, it means there's something that could be built there that that's significant and, and hard. Right. Um, but I think again, no, no particular affinity for, for AI therapy and and so I don't know I asked around and I was like hey does anyone need like AI therapy and there's like nobody uh, there's like one guy who talked to us six times a day but there wasn't much there um, and like literally twelve times a day he would ring this thing up and like talk for hours I was like what is what is this guy uh, he was actually a good friend of mine I don't know. <laughs> so maybe he was doing it to be nice um, and eventually. I forget how this happened, but I think I was talking to another startup. They were working on voice stuff. And I was like, man, your voice stack kind of sucks compared to ours. Like, I know ours sucks too, but like ours sucks less. So why don't, why don't I just turn this thing into an API and like, we'll just do a whole speech in, speech out thing. You can configure the prompt in the API and then maybe this will just solve your problem. And it, and it didn't, but it kind of did. And so it was, it was just enough for them to be like, okay, let's just use Vappy. And then it went down like 24 seven, et cetera. But at least like we were the team making sure it stayed up. Yeah, uh, and got faster and actually got more natural. Those are things that they, uh, the, 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 uh, their company name was uh, Hyperbound. They were doing like AI role play training for salespeople. Um, and so we just work with them trying to find like where the line stops for like where our platform ends and their platform starts and try to figure out, okay, well, if this company needs this, well, we can't build like a sales role play training module into our platform. It's probably a little early for that. But let's just decide what's generic and then try to find others. And then we kind of found a few others and then the whole thing started from there. Wow. What perseverance you had. And I really love hearing the stories about like just trying and trying and seeing what sticks and you get things that do stick like the one click or like the therapist, you do see there's signals there, but it seems like you're okay with having a bit of success and then scrapping it to go for the bigger success that you know is possible. Yeah. And I think at the time, what was different this time around was, okay, these models across the board, they're getting cheaper, they're getting faster, they're getting closer to human performance across the, the, the whole like uh, transcription LLM text-to-speech stack. Um, if this continues, well, theoretically, we'll be at human performance in the next like year and a half. Yeah. So it's kind of yeah. like this time around, we were like, okay, let's look to a projected future based on first principles that this is going to happen. If these models exist, it's probably going to be still really hard to get them turned into voice agents and then get those voice agents to production, like actual production, like customers talking on the phone or in websites or like whatever it is. Um, so why don't we just start building that stuff now? And then hopefully, eventually we can, it, the models are good enough that we can take like a, a larger variety of use cases, not just like lower risk role play training and that is eventually what what happened so um i think we also made a bet that apple would release um like apple intelligence or siri and then like that would change the world in terms of voice i thought it would have happened by now but it still hasn't so i'm actually I'm still waiting for that big moment where everybody, i am also i think yeah, we all shifts. are siri that can 
do stuff uh, reliably would be incredible. Yeah. And it is beyond my understanding why we do not have that. Yeah, 100%. And I, I think that's the, the big blocker to voice just being adopted as widely as it should be, even with the current state of the models right now, is just distribution. Mm. Uh, consumers just don't have access to these. Yeah, it's in a chat GPT, like advanced voice mode, but it's not like... Yeah. It's not, it's not like in the room with me right now, like how am I here, right? Um, yeah, and it's especially it, like the classic one that you see is Jarvis. And we don't talk to our computers. And it is really weird that we don't because it's almost like we should be able to at least to like launch an app. Yeah. Or toggle to an app. Open, bring me the window that has Slack on it. Or, or show me type. the window. Yeah, to type even. And I know that uh, we've had somebody on here from Super Whisper before. And oh, that's Whisper their whole thing. Or and Super Whisper, I think. Oh, I haven't heard of that. Okay. Cool. Their, their whole thing is like just, you know, hotkey, start talking and it will type and it will use AI to almost clean up your talking while you're typing or yeah. talking and, and then typing it in. But yeah. the the one thing that I think about too from your side, and I got to imagine you have gamed this out in various different scenarios and I would love to hear what your opinions are speech to speech models feel like they are not something that are going to totally just disappear. If anything, you're probably going to grow, grow, grow. How do you see Vappy in a world where now, as you said, there's more and more progress and speech to speech models get good? Yeah. Right I mean, now they're probably yeah. not. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not yet, uh, but they definitely will be. And so, I mean, up until OpenAI announced it in like May of last year, we were actually training a speech to speech or, or starting to train speech, parts of speech to speech models. We had no oh, idea wow. what we were doing, but we were like, this is obviously what we're going to do. We're just building the proxy to it right now with all these yeah. other models. Yeah. Um, of course, that was, that was naive at the time. But what we did decide is, okay, why don't we just make our platform as modular as possible? So modular that you can't even, not not just can you switch out an LLM or switch out a text-to-speech provider or a transcription provider, but what if you could switch out the entire architecture and it all work the same? What do you mean by architecture? What? Like like moving from a transcription LLM text-to-speech stack to a speech-to-speech stack, you can just toggle oh, nice. that and make a switch, right? Oh, nice. Yeah, and yeah. still yeah, have okay. access to all the same tooling, all the same integrations, all the same like conversation workflow, like builders, infrastructure, integrations with like telephony, et cetera. Um, so, so that's how I think about us is like, we are, we're everything in between the models, regardless of the state of them and actually talking to customers on the phone and then everything that comes after that. So, or, or on websites or whatever, but uh -huh. I would say primarily over the phone. And so we're like kind of the last mile, if that makes sense, or the second last mile, because other people <laughs> build stuff on top of us. Yeah. Right. It makes a ton of sense. And it is obvious now that you say it, because there are going to be scenarios where I want speech to speech because I'm okay with a little bit more mm -hmm. looseness, we could say. Yeah. But then there's other scenarios where the person that is building on top of that be wants. It's true. Speed and precision and accuracy and no hallucinations. And there's going to be those constraints that each person has. Yep. And there will be like this big shift. Like right now, I think traffic on our platform is like 999 cascaded system, like the three model system, uh, 0 0.01, you know. And, and But over time, I think end of this year, maybe, um, I mean, the, it's February right now. So maybe we'll get to like 20, 30% speech to speech, I would imagine. But the rest will still be cascaded. Um, it's, it's mostly because the speech to speech models, one, they're still not at the point of reliability that we need. They're not at the point of... Um, configuration that we need either so like for example like i can't use a custom voice uh -huh. with a real-time api yet and they'll come out with it piece by piece but like usually there's like one thing that sticks out that is missing or that needs to be customized for this specific person's use case like i need postal codes to be picked up in this particular format or like just some weird shit like that yeah that makes it so and that they have to yeah. they have to they you have to use a cascaded system and there's probably like four or five things in a real deployment that are that are custom like that um and so that's why we 
we approach things is like, let's just build a super modular platform. Let's expose ex as much config as possible and then let them do whatever they want with it. Um, yeah. And then we try to do the hard work of mapping that config to these models as soon as mm -hmm. it becomes available. Have you seen a lot of people using these open source uh, text to speech models? Because they are really good. Like the, what is it, Kokoro? Or, I can't remember the name now. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a few of them. We don't really we, we try to be GP, GPU less um, ourselves, oh, okay. just because managing the infrastructure is is you guys know it's it's a lot, um, and, and it's much lighter weight if we can not not require GPUs. Um, so we don't run any open source models ourselves. We don't see a ton of pull for open source models either, because honestly, the the like you you guys, Eleven Labs, etc., like they all have your they're best in class, and people want best in class on the phone. Mm -hmm. um they, they don't that want yeah like Look the open source. yeah exactly exactly like like i would say the minimum bar is is the the providers who can who who whose job it is to be paid to run them uh, and then train them okay so you gave me a bit of a breakdown on what vapi does and how there's the models and the whole voice part in the middle but there's so much else that's around it can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, the the short of it is once you have all these models, you need to orchestrate them so they all kind of sound and feel human. Interruptions, make sure the kid in the back of the car isn't fucking with the transcription model, like all those little those little things. Um, once you have it talking like a person, it's like now I need to integrate this agent with my data. And so hooking up these like tool calling endpoints, et cetera, like we make that super easy in, in the platform handling the various states of tool calls when they come in. You know, if it fails, it takes too long, et cetera. Like that all needs to be considered as well. So we have configs for that as well. Um, on top of that, it's like, okay, I have an agent, it talks, it, it works my data. Now I need to make sure it does what it's supposed to do every time. And so that's where we, we talk about workflows or like determinism, like helping you build like step-by-step -step flows. So it's not just a prompt freestyling and hallucinating, but it's like, get the first name, now use the tool call. Yeah. Um, on top of all that, once you have it, it works every time, whatever, you then need to scale that with infrastructure to tens of thousands of calls. That's like really hard. And the infrastructure for real-time audio is quite exotic, as I'm sure you guys you guys know, especially for long running phone calls that need to have like sub 500 millisecond latency. Oh man. Um, and then beyond that, it's like, how do we actually integrate with like telephony infrastructure and everything to make it go live? Once it's live, it's like, how do we actually observe these calls in production and then make sure that we learn from our mistakes, build tests out of the failed calls and then improve the calls over time. So that's like the whole the whole loop of it. But yeah, so we're a, we're a platform mostly built for developers and engineering teams, API native. So it makes it so people can build whatever they want on top of us, just like you guys. Um, and yeah, right now we are, uh, I, I believe the leading platform for developers to build uh, voice agents specifically. Um, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, to this year and what speech to speech is gonna bring to the platform, so. Yeah. Awesome. And you're based in San Francisco. Are you guys hiring? Yes, we are. We are hiring every role across the, the, the stack. I love um, hearing that. We are hiring aggressively. Uh, so please uh, come join us. We just raised our Series A. Uh, we're a team of like 24. You can get in early after product market fit. The growth is insane. We just need help managing it. So please uh, come join us.